The Crow. And what a hit this was, for many different reasons. Yes. This, of course, caused quite a stir because it was the movie uh, where Brandon Lee died tragically right. during an onset mishap involving a prop firearm that was used for a prior take, uh, but they didn't know that it, it was actually the bullet they were using. They took the primer out, but it didn't fire right, so there was a squib load in it. So when they used it for the different take where they aimed it at Brandon Lee, it fired the gun out, it killed, or fired the bullet out, it killed him. Tragically, but right. It was like something was lodged in the barrel, and essentially, yeah. what happened is, uh, what was lodged in there was basically sent out with the velocity of a bullet. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I, I guess right there, that that's an unfortunate. I mean, that's so unfortunate for a lot of reasons. Because mm-hmm. Brandon Lee, who was, you know, his star was rising, obviously, yeah, just robbed of that mm-hmm. because of uh, negligence. negligence. Yeah. I mean, and it's one of those things where it sucks that something that turned out pretty good. Yeah. You know, I I, I, I enjoyed the hell out of this movie. Yeah. it's It just sucks that it, it has to be surrounded in that type of tragedy. Mm-hmm. It's, but, it's like The Dark Knight. Yeah, it's, it's just... Weirdly, because it's similar well, looking characters. Although, different circumstances, yeah. but, but nonetheless, like, just as shitty that something uh, as a... As a piece of entertainment that's so wonderful had to be kind of shrouded by such shitty events regardless if you can like get past them or whatever it's like there's that's kind of unfortunately part of the mythology and that's why it it brings this interesting chicken before the egg question with both films it's like would this movie is this movie popular regardless or would this movie have been as popular if it wasn't surrounded by such a you know a very dark and sad but truthful tragedy I, it's interesting. You know what? I think in both cases, and this case especially, mm-hmm. that it still would have been the hit it was. I agree. Uh, and this is kind of a tongue-in-cheek, but this just really was... It just hit the nail on, on the goth head. Yeah, it did. <laughs> like, you know, it was if, like... If you, if you were one of those kids who went to Hot Topic, <laughs> holy shit, this must have been... You're, you're a part in the phrase, basically your Bible at the time. Your bread and butter. Yes. So I had never seen this. There were a lot of guys. Strang- ki- yeah, strangely enough, I'd never seen this either. Even- really? Well, it, it was one of those things where I remember, you know, I, I was a little young when it came out, but mm-hmm. I remember years later it was still talked about as a popular Halloween costume. Uh, I just never got around to it. Me neither. And so I was finally glad to do so, but I remember it being pretty much a cultural phenomenon for, oh, yeah. for a few years. Had heard of it, knew of the Brandon Lee incident, right. knew of Brandon Lee, knew of all the stuff. Well, not not even th- that stuff. I'm just saying like the movie itself. Yeah, the makeup, the the costume. Right. Yeah, the iconography. Yes, this movie is very iconic. Mm-hmm. To say the least. To say the least. So, well, what did you, what did you think of it? I mean, you, you pretty much already said you liked it. Yes, but I like this a lot. Specifically. Well, it's one of those things where it's the way they depict a world. Yeah. <laughs> and again, this is sort of a product of things that had come before it. Mm-hmm. It it borrowed a lot from the whole kind of renaissance of, uh, or resurgence rather, of, of uh, I guess, neo German expressionism. <laughs> you know what's so weird is that yeah. first shot where we're like panning over the city. Yeah. And like there's like CGI fire everywhere. I'm like, first of all, love how how dated this looks. Like in a good way. I'm like, oh yeah. man, this is like so old. The, but those like miniatures. I was like, where the hell does this take place? Hell? Yeah. And then, like, it's like, mention- nope, it's just Detroit. I was like, oh, so it's close. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, no offense to Detroit, but right. everything's red. I'm like, is this really what it's like on, on Devil's Night in Detroit? Yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> like, the damn. Other, that's the other cool thing. I didn't know what the hell Devil's Night no. was really. No, me neither. Uh, yeah, but for those of you playing at home, Germ- I mentioned German expressionism. That was a style of film that sucked balls, and it's from the <laughs> the the early twenties and thirties, right? Like, well, cabinet. it was like it was kind of before. It was like between like Caligari ni- era, nineteen fifteen to nineteen thirty ish. Yeah, and it's this. Uh, it's just a lot of black and white, and a, a lot, lot of, of weird uh, shapes in the set. Yes, a lot of uh, I jagged, guess, you know, Kukaloris type stuff, which is like jagged, weird. almost. 
weird silhouettes. Almost, yeah, a, lo- a lot of black and white motifs, but really playing those up. Even mm-hmm. even with the movies being black and white, like a lot of things that are painted, obviously black and obviously white. Right, right. And they're about like. Uh, you know, psychological unease. A lot of high contrast lighting. A lot of yes. shadow and characters standing in bright light or shadow. Right. So that's what I mean when I say that. That's mm-hmm. just some... That's know. a film term. That's a film nerd term. Or yeah, that's just like... Film school history term. Yeah, it's just that bullshit. But I couldn't help but notice that. So mm-hmm. movies that were like this, that had really, you know, caused that resurgence. Obviously, Tim Burton's Batman, yeah. you know... Uh, a few years before in 89 mm-hmm. and then continuing that with returns. Yeah. Dark man. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of movies at this time that were kind of going with this trend, mm-hmm. except with the crow. The difference was they were, they were making it about the right now mm-hmm. with, with the whole goth esque look, the goth grunge thing. They, they really did a number at, uh, at combining both elements, the goth and the grunge. Oh Yeah. Uh, you had a, a the nightclub scene. I love that mm-hmm. because w- where the band is playing, I, th- I think it's it's if it's not KFM, uh, whatever the hell they're called, you know, KFM, KMFDM, something like that. Whatever the fuck, the, the, the industrial band that isn't Nine Inch Nails. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it, a band that sounds like them is playing. I don't know if that's them. Right. Uh Felt very nineties. It felt very, very nineties. Oh yeah. Industrial, unfortunately, it seems like it sort of came and went. Yeah, a little bit. Uh well, or at least the the peak of it came and went. <laughs> um, when the guys are driving in the car and you can just hear in the background, Time Chases on. Oh yeah. <laughs> They're listening. I'm like, oh these are some hard cats. That's what I mean, man. <laughs> Is, is that S, S, STP? I think Stone, Temple Stone, Pilots, Temple, Stone Temple Pilots. They listen to all that good 90s shit. Like, oh, man, these so guys the, are hardcore. Yeah, they're in this 90s club, and the clothes are just the ugliest clothes you have ever seen. Oh, yeah. I'm not, I'm not really a fashionable guy, but good God. And the big bad you know, guy, top dog, yeah. looking like he's a reject concept art from Interview with the Vampire. Looks like, like the Count of Monte Cristo. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. It's the goth grunge hybrid. You know, you got the the leopard print poor boy caps with overalls, <laughs> or or maybe a meth, sh- uh, sorry, a, a mesh shirt with leather pants, and who the hell knows, freaking plastic bags of shoes, whatever the hell. <laughs> they, they were just really overdoing it. And but yet, that- how normal does Ernie Hudson look? Yeah, <laughs> I love it. That's what I'm saying. So it really it dove in deep mm-hmm. on, on its on its world. Yeah. So because it's like maybe this isn't the ex- the exact way the real world is. Mm-hmm. It's not supposed to be. But they're really making their universe their own. They were with with whatever ugly uh, thrift store clothes they could. <laughs> you know. Oh yeah. Well, where else do we go from there? So well, you got to talk Brandon Lee's portrayal. Honestly, I really liked his. And this is not just to kiss ass. Like, it's not just because he died. Yeah, it's, it, it's it, because you see the fucking potential that this guy has as a screen presence. Like, just interacting with certain characters with with this makeup on, uh, reciting lines that are supposed to be tongue in cheek, goofy, laughing, right. and also giving you know little little words of wisdom and like you know kind of sardonic things. Like the one line I liked is, "What are you going to disappear again?" Actually, I was thinking about leaving through your front door. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's, you know, it's such a, like, winking at the camera, but, like, this guy's a fucking star. And, like, yeah. that's what kills me watching this is, this is his star-making movie. Like, it was like Heath Ledger in The Dark Knight. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, this would have been the peak of his career. Right. Or the start of a, a really incredible trajectory in his career. Um, and it's interesting how, kind of like the character at hand, this movie, in many ways, because Brandon Lee was killed like ended up dying and how through a weird event this production kind of resurrected itself like its protagonistic character into something much more yeah. grand than anyone anticipated i mean it's, it's weird well that's a meta way of looking at it and probably it, reading too much into it but no, it's kind of weird i i couldn't help but notice that a little bit and i mean that just happens like all the weird shit that happened and all the tragedies that happened mm-hmm. with uh bruce lee well 
No, not particularly. Well, there's that whole thing. But it doesn't, I mean, not that that means anything, but it is unfortunate that also Bruce Lee passed Well, I mean, soon. I could go on and on about, uh, talk about passing too soon. Yeah, man. Uh, but I was going to say, the shit that went down on uh, the set of Poultry, Poltergeist. Oh, yeah, yeah, that There's too. a lot of weird stuff, and it, it just happens that it seems sort of... Connected or e- eerily connected, yeah, because the genre of the movie, right? And, yeah, no, sure. but but uh, the thing is, though, Brandley filmed almost all his scenes. Mm-hmm. It was really there's a couple scenes with stand ins. I think the scene where he talks to Sarah, uh, the where she's in the apartment, yeah, there's like a scene or two there. Fun fact, Chad Stelsky. Was the stand-in, was yeah. Was the stand-in the, I didn't know and that. the stunt double. Yeah. yeah, I thought he just did the work for uh, Keanu in The Matrix, but I was like, holy shit. No, he's... he's doubling for Brandon Lee. Yeah, but I agree. I really liked his performance, and I kind of got that uh, that that aura from him that he, in his resurrection, he'd become something more mm-hmm. than whatever he was in his past life. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And, uh, yeah, I like that whole thing, like... You shouldn't be smoking these. <laughs> They'll kill you. There's a lot of funny shit. Yeah. Or, you know, just really bluntly, morphine is bad for you. <laughs> What's the one line he says about mothers where it's he's quoting Shakespeare? Yeah. The, oh, oh, that was my favorite. Mm-hmm. Is because part of his thing is he is a he's a, a beacon of vengeance. Mm-hmm. But and, he's also a good guy. No, he's a good guy, but he is a... I, what would you a spirit of vengeance so when he comes to the guy's pawn shop mm-hmm. and i heard a rapping on the door he's, <laughs> doing, he's quoting uh the raven yeah the quoting raven thing the raven if you will. yeah quoting the raven mm-hmm. i really love that because it gives you the idea that you're not really sure if he's all there mm-hmm. but i mean you think he knows what he's doing he's on a mission right but it, it's almost that's like the inner struggle of his character. Right. Like, how much is too far? What is what does he have to do to finally be at peace? Right. And the the reveal at the end where it's like, it's the crow. Yeah. And you get a little bit of, you're like, oh shit. So he is fallible. So it's interesting how that, they play with that dynamic where it's like, well, I don't really care if he's going to get shot because yeah. he's just going to keep, he's just going to come back. He's invincible. But, but then, then they then... introduce that dynamic and it's like, oh shit. Well, not only that, it's that it only lasts for, what, a day or so? Mm -hmm. Or at least that's what's kind of implied, I guess. Also, did you know that none of those birds on set were crows? Yeah. They were all ravens. Ravens make sense. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, they look different than crows. Yes, crows have a smaller beak. Okay. Uh, Let's see. What else we got here? Uh, Yeah, Ernie Hudson. Spot on. Really good. Like, you know what? This is a movie where I was like... Ernie Hudson's in this? Like, I only know him as, like, he's in fucking Ghostbusters. Right. And, like, what an unfortunate thing for me to think. Like, what an unfortunate thing for me to not know that he was in this and has played such a big part in this. Right. Like, he's 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 Eric Draven's Jim Gordon. He He's, yeah, exactly. He is, well, to make another comparison to Batman. He, like, almost, pr- like, to the T of, like, every time he looks over, yeah, he's gone. <laughs> he's gone. <laughs> it's great. Well, I also loved his arc. Oh, you know, yeah. Because mm-hmm. he, he'd gotten uh, in trouble for being sticking his nose where it doesn't belong. Yeah. And then, you know, it's your it's your classic cop versus douchebag hotshot detective. Yeah, yeah. Just keeping keeping this, this, this you know, your regular cop down. Yeah. I always love this. This is out of your jurisdiction. <laughs> and he's just like, well, you can take jurisdiction and shove it up your ass. Pretty much. Or there's the part where he figures it out before him. It's like, oh, I thought you'd know. Yeah, it's like you were just too late. Yeah, he just says, <laughs> oh, I thought I thought you're the detective. Yeah. <laughs> Give me that file. Yeah. It's good stuff. Oh, also, man. Bai Ling, is it just me or has she secretly been in just about everything? Yeah, there's been a lot of stuff from like, is that you? <laughs> Crank it, it high voltage. The, <laughs> there's the weirdest thing happened. I thought. Why does she sound and look so familiar? Mm-hmm. And I couldn't place it. And then the credits came along. Surely enough, I see the name Bai Ling. And then, aha, that's who. Yeah. It's because you've been in everything. Pretty much. She, like, gets her eyes poked out by that by that crow. I mean, it's a raven. The crow. I was thinking somebody's <laughs> got to. Yeah, it's, it's uh, showing up. There, it's there's the a crow. On the wall. <laughs> yeah. This crow is just 
Craven some eyes. Yeah. We've got some Tony Todd in here, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hell of Hellfest and Candyman. Right. Love me some Tony Todd. So you got a lot to work with. Oh, yeah. Uh, I thought the fight scenes were pretty good. Yeah, they were pretty good. I thought the the gun fight scenes were a lot. Yeah, more, more. I, I thought the lot the gun fight scenes were a little bit better. Yeah, which is weird because I thought they'd you know utilize the fact that Brandon Lee's a martial artist See, a that, bit more. That's what I thought with the crow. I'm like, okay, so this is like a martial arts centric movie, and it kind of is. No, no, it's definitely not. Yeah, there's there's some fisticuffs, but like you can tell that the fisticuffs are supposed to be more. Like Eric Draven doesn't know him. Yeah, Marshall Eric Draven as a character, he's the guitarist in a band, and then he and his fiance are murdered, mm-hmm. and so that's the plot as he comes back. Right. Uh, a year later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to to have his vengeance and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So I get that they're not gonna make him know martial arts, and I guess that's fine. It's just, uh, man, if there was a way to shoehorn that in somehow, yeah, it would have been pretty cool. But, yeah, no, I like the gunfights especially. Uh, the fight scene at the end I really enjoyed, too, with the sword and, like, yeah, he, he grabs, the weather like, vane. Yeah, I was like, that's Thank goodness great. this weather vane is just perfectly shaped like a sword, basically. <laughs> I don't know what I would have done if it was, like, you know, one of the ones where it's a rooster or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I, just, I like the visual motifs, the use of the churches and all that. Yeah, a lot of high key lighting, like a lot of high contrast, like, oh man, like silhouettes and church spires yeah. and dark alleys and rain. What do you think of the sister? Uh, the, the, sis- the younger sister. Oh, oh, she was okay. Yeah. I mean, I thought she was good for t- a role. Yeah, I was like, you know, typical 90s child actor. Chip- typical 90s skateboarding. <laughs> Not one of these dumbass longboards, a regular skateboard. Yeah, that's true. You know? Back and, in the Diz A. And she's, you know, like everyone else, wearing God knows what. Wearing some weird, like, fishnet stockings. Denim shit. With the weird, like, poncho. Corduroy yeah. skirt. <laughs> you know, typical of 94. Yeah. Or, what was 94? Jesus, why Not, do I keep forgetting this? 94. 94. Right. She's got some ugly clothes on. She yeah. want to fit it, you know, she's... Acting like the cool kids, the older kids. Yeah, dude. At the club. <laughs> it was, was in vogue. Yeah, watching uh, pilot hat based guy. <laughs> you know, all, all the weird characters in that band and such. Yeah. It's just like, I, what? Is, like that band, I don't know who it is or if it's a real band. Mm-hmm. I just felt like, this is garbage heroin hooker dump. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I just loved all the canted angles when they were shooting that concert. Oh, uh, very German expressionism. It is, it was. It's like, what's going on in this scene? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) This is so wacky. It's just a very, very absolutely 90s movie. Oh, yeah. It's super goofy in mostly good ways. That's the thing is, I think the, the, I I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd go as far as say campy, Mm -hmm. but it worked. Yeah. Because they, I think the usage of what looked like miniatures, I guess, Mm -hmm. for the buildings from the far, like the long shots. Mm Mm-hmm. Kind of, it's like not that it's unreal, but it, they did a good job of making this world surreal. Right, right. I agree, but still believable. I, I mean, yeah, it's it's. I really enjoyed it. I'm glad I saw it. And yeah, I, I, it's un, It's just crushing that this was the final work of an actor who was on the upslope. You know, yeah. Like man, this guy was a talent, and he his his portrayal of. Eric Draven slash The Crow is is an undoubtedly iconic one, and I'm glad I finally got this one off yeah. the old movie bucket list. Yeah, I was glad to have seen this, too. Uh, I thought overall it was a very good movie. There, there was a couple slow parts. It was, you know what it was? So it starts off, he's going after all the, the guys who who done him wrong. So mm-hmm. he's taking them down one by one, and I thought that was awesome. Mm-hmm. But then there's this weird slowdown. And then all of a sudden, you're sort of introduced to what's his name, Tim Dollar or whatever. Oh yeah, the top dollar. Top dollar. Yeah, yeah. You're like, where the hell did this guy come from? Yeah, and it's like I and actually then, did it. I. Like, oh, okay. I. Uh, yeah, it's I was like the one that you know that, sent the order in the house or whatever. Yeah, that's a little late. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean, overall, that didn't like kill the movie. It's no. just maybe the villain could have been handled a bit differently, like playing with eyeballs and <laughs> setting eyeballs on fire. No, I, I don't mind the eyeballs on fire. I'm More saying, appealing to the Hellraiser crowd. No, see, yeah. 
Gotta go after that Hellraiser crowd. R- right. <laughs> also a Miramax movie. Yeah. Uh, well, at least at the time. God knows who who's doing Hellraiser now. Yeah, I don't know if I want to know. Yeah, it's like uh, Rogue or ex- something. I think, Sony's, uh, I think Sony's involved, which makes me not so happy. I don't know. It doesn't Unless matter. it's animated. Yes. <laughs> but... Point was that could have maybe been introduced a little bit earlier. I don't know how they would do that. Right. Overall, though, they made up for it with the dynamite third act. Oh yeah, yeah. Crazy gunfights, ahoy! Crazy gunfights, ahoy! And a sword fight on a church. <laughs> how the hell can you not love that? Oh yeah. And Bai Ling getting her eyes pecked out. Yeah, there, there's a lot to work with. <laughs> True. Everyone comes around. Mm-hmm. And Ernie Hudson also helps him out. He gets his time to shine. It was a good team up. Mm-hmm. I like their dynamic. Me too. So, I guess I'm out of shit to say. I thought this was an excellent movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a, I'm disappointed that it took me so long to see this. Oh yeah. Yeah. Damn. Okay. So uh, let's move on to scores. Okay. Go ahead. What do you got? Oh me. Yeah. Oh man. Uh. Well, I like the movie a lot. I'm glad I saw it. I think it's. I never actually was bored at all. I was engaged thoroughly throughout. I thought the first act was a little weird, and reading up on why, it yeah, was, it was there, that was pretty much the part of the movie that wasn't shot yet for Eric or Eric for, for uh, Brandon, Brandon Lee. Lee. Yeah, and I get that, but so the, and, well, and also they had to reshoot some of it because right. they didn't because the, I I heard they destroyed the actual footage. Oh yeah, yeah, because uh, that was per like the contract for that. Uh, like sort of settlement or something. Yeah, like but, I think the police destroyed it. Yeah, and I get that, but I I was uh you know I I still can't take away I still can't separate from the fact that like it is a little choppy and it is a little right it's, yeah it's shaky and I felt that some of the the goofy the goofiness of certain elements like with certain elements of the humor and certain characters were like a little bit over the top again in a '90s way and I get and, that and, but, in the way that this world was set yeah. up yeah. Um, but overall, I was like super in- entertained from start to finish. And I know this sounds like a low ball score, but it's not. Like I probably give it a seven. Ah, oh, make me sick. I know. I, well, I enjoyed it though. That's like my standard. Like I have. There's not really anything flagrantly wrong with it. Like it's a perfectly enjoyable movie, and right. it's a crime that we didn't get more of these. Yeah. Well, or, more of them with Brandon Lee. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> we did we, get we, more. We they got just, more. They just sucked, and I didn't even know they existed until IMDb told me they did. I'm curious to see them. Uh, I'm not going a whole lot higher. Mm-hmm. I'm giving this a four out of five. Okay, or, so that's or not on that bad. your horrible heathen scale, an eight, an eight out of ten. Okay, that's not bad because it's not that I was like super bored. I just felt like there was a drop mm-hmm. in that after it's like great, he's been killing all these guys. Now what? Yeah, yeah. And then top dollar says this is what. Yeah, and uh, I was glad he he was there, mm-hmm. and I totally thought he was Raiden for some reason because <laughs> the hair. Well, it's the hair and the voice. Yeah. <laughs> I was just imagining that guy saying, the realm of Earth, of outer <laughs> world, or whatever. What the, what the fuck is it called? In, whatever. <laughs> in Mortal Kombat. Earth realm. Yeah, whatever. I thought it was him, wasn't him. But, of course, they deliver in the third act, so I'd give it, as I said, four out of five. Alrighty. So that'll do it for our review of The Crow.